The American public, as Mark points out, understand the importance of keeping firearms uh, purchases away from convicted felons and those who have been adjudicated mentally ill. That's what we agree upon in terms of background checks. Uh, right now, I think one of the greatest challenges is that uh, we've seen uh, gun control legislation, uh, which I think was rightfully discarded as not the right solution. Uh, school safety efforts is a good solution, but the third one is the enforcement side, and I know Mark's probably just as frustrated that uh, despite the president's commitment, there's not been an increased effort in enforcement of our gun laws. And I think the Department of Justice should look at why there's hundreds of thousands of uh, over the years that have applied unlawfully for a firearm, been rejected for it, but yet they haven't been prosecuted, such a very small percent of those. And why is that the case? If there's some good reasons for it, we ought to know that. But the enforcement side right. has, and the president was committed to it, has not uh, been implemented. Go ahead, Mark. Hey, Wolf, so, you know, ASA made it clear that it's important to keep guns out of the hands of criminals and the dangerously mentally ill. And one way to do that is expanding background checks to, the, to, to gun shows and the Internet. And I think, I think he agrees with that. And that's what that piece of legislation did in April that failed on April 17th, I believe it was, the Manchin-Toomey compromise bill that expanded background checks. Now, with regards to enforcement, you know, those are two separate things. We know that since 1999, there have been about 2 million criminals that have been prevented from buying a gun uh, because they failed a background check. Now, yeah, we didn't enforce, as in we didn't prosecute all of those people for that crime they committed, but they were prevented from getting a gun. Now, how many of them went down to the gun show uh, or to an Internet? or from, got a firearm from some other person, we really have no idea. That's why we should have pretty much a universal background check system with some exceptions. All right. Since the law passed in Colorado recently, we've stopped 74 people, 74 criminals. These are people that have committed murder, domestic abuse, have been pre prevented from buying a gun. Go ahead, Asa. Well, Will, let me make it clear, in reference to the background checks and the quote that you played, I actually read the uh, Toomey bill on that, and that was a burden on the average citizen, where if they live out in the country, they drive 30 miles, if they wanted to sell a firearm to a neighbor, uh, they'd have to have a pay a fee, background check, and keep records. That's too much of a burden, and it doesn't solve the problem. No criminal or bad actor is going to go through that process. So rather than chasing this rainbow that doesn't work in reference to reducing uh, violence or unlawful people from hiring firearms, let's concentrate on the enforcement side and on the safety side. I'll give you the last word, Mark. Well, that's the point, right? If you expand background checks, I mean, the point ACE is trying to make is some of them will not go through that process. Well, what happens when they don't go through that process? The ones that decide not to, they don't get a gun that they're likely to use to commit a crime. So by expanding background checks, I mean, it's only logical that it makes it much more difficult for criminals and the dangerously mentally ill to have access to, to dangerous weapons. And we're not about restricting, uh, you know, the access for responsible Americans, gun owners like Gabby and I, like millions of people around this country, should be able to buy a gun. But what's the, what's the issue with doing a background check that takes two minutes? It is not a burden.